we're going to take a quick look at friction. During this video, we'll learn what it is, why it happens, what are the two types and how they're different, what is a coefficient of friction, how do we calculate friction forces, and what do typical friction problems look like. Friction happens because of microsco microscopic rough spots on the surfaces of objects we're trying to slide against each other. Even if you polish surfaces and make them smooth, you can't eliminate friction altogether because you can't completely smooth out these rough spots. What two things affect the amount, or let's say the force of friction between two surfaces? So this little elephant's having some trouble uh, navigating the mud puddle. And what is it about the situation that's making him not have very much friction here? Uh, there are two things that make a difference. You can see it with the otter. You can see it with the cat. The first, and should be the most obvious, is the material or the materials. Because it's not just one material, it's the otter's belly and the ice or snow. It's the elephant's feet and the muddy ground. It's the cat's paws and the slick uh, surface of the slide. So it is a combination of the two materials. And the second that might not be as obvious from any of these videos, if we look at the elephants, notice Mama elephant's not having any trouble, and for two reasons. Mama elephant's not having any trouble because mama ele elephant's walking on the dry ground, which is, uh, has um, a rougher surface and is easier uh, for her to walk on. The second thing is mama elephant's really big. Mama elephant has a lot of weight, and if mama ele elephant walked through mud like this, mama elephant wouldn't have as much trouble because... Uh, the frictional force depends not only on what the materials are, but upon the normal force between the two materials. Now, in our experience, if we have an object on a surface, we have said the normal force is up and the weight of the object is down. And often, most of the time actually, those are equal. Uh, but remember, not always. Because if um, you are pushing down on the box, if this person pushes down with an additional force, then you, if I drew a free body diagram of the box, we'd have the pushing force and the weight down and the normal force up. So the normal force in this case would be bigger than the weight. So just remember the, the normal force is often equal to the weight, which is equal to mg, but it's not always. These are the two things that can affect friction. The pa pair of surfaces that you have and the normal force between them. There are two types of friction. There's static friction and kinetic friction. Static friction resist the beginning oops, of sliding motion. Kinetic friction resists the sliding motion, the actual motion itself. So the static friction happens before the object even gets started moving. And between the same two objects, the static frictional force is bigger than the kinetic frictional force. It takes more force to get something started moving than it does to move it once you've begun moving it. And you can see from this video, or this little gif here, that um, when they're stationary, these things are kind of, all their little microscopic roughnesses are uh, locked into each other. Once it gets going, they kind of move across the top of each other. So getting something started sliding is more difficult than keeping it sliding once it's moving. And the type of friction that resists the beginning of that sliding motion is static friction. And the uh, type of friction that resists the continuing sliding between two objects is kinetic friction. And we would denote one with um, the force of sliding friction or the force of kinetic friction.
So what is a coefficient of friction? A coefficient of friction is a number that represents how, with what difficulty or with what ease it is to slide materials across each other. If you have a high coefficient of friction, that means that the pair of surfaces do not move easily over each other. If you have a low coefficient of friction, that means the pair of surfaces slide easily over each other. So metal ice skates on ice would have a very low coefficient of friction. Uh, a tire and a road surface, like rubber tires and concrete road surfaces, would have a high coefficient of friction. And you would want that because you would want them uh, not to slide very easily across each other. The symbol for coefficient of friction is the Greek letter mu, and it looks like this. It is not a U, don't call it a U. Um, it looks like that. In some textbooks, it's very vertical like this. I tend to draw it more like that, but it's the Greek letter mu. And how do we calculate the force? So putting together some of the things that we've already learned, um, what coefficient of friction is, and that normal force affects uh, the magnitude of the frictional force, we now have some equations. The static friction force is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. If you look at this uh, GIF, the guy starts pushing with a very, very small force, and then the force gets bigger and bigger and bigger. His pushing force is the red one, the applied force, and the blue force is the frictional force. Because it's not moving, because there is no acceleration, oops, I was about to say acceleration does not equal zero, because acceleration equals zero, the sum of the forces acting must also be equal to zero. And so the frictional force is equal and opposite to his pushing force, uh, up until the point where he pushes with the maximum value of mu n. When he gets, when his force gets that big, then the object will start moving. So at the point where the frictional force equals uh, the coefficient of static friction times the normal force, that's when movement begins. Up until that point, the applied force and the frictional force are equal and opposite. Now, once he gets the thing moving, the frictional force is just equal to mu k. No matter how fast he moves it, whether he pushes it really, really fast with constant speed, with acceleration, the frictional force will be in the opposite direction of the motion and it will equal the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. So the uh, coefficient of static friction is always greater the coefficient of kinetic friction. So let's work a couple of problems. A box has a mass of 100 kilograms and the coefficient of static friction, so mu s is 0 0.2 and the mass is 100 kilograms. What force is required to make it move? Well, it will move when the applied force is equal to that maximum frictional force value of coefficient of static friction times the normal force. If I draw a three body diagram here, um, vertically, I have the normal force and down the weight. There are no other vertical forces because the box is being pushed this way. It's going to apply a force to the right. And so, using Newton's second law, we can see that in this case, the normal force is equal to the gravitational force, or the mg. Now, I'm going to use g as 10 meters per second squared, and so the normal force in this problem is 1,000 newtons. So I can calculate that maximum frictional force, the minimum force that's going to have to be used to push that box to get it started moving, as coefficient of static friction is 0.2 times the normal force, which is a thousand newtons. Uh, coefficient of friction does not have any units at all. And 0.2 times a thousand is 200. And the units are newtons, it's a force. Okay, so we have to push that box with a 200 newton force, get it started moving. If you continue pushing the box with that same force, so now we're pushing the box, it's moving. We're pushing it with a 200 newton. This is not a three body diagram, it's just a um, sketch. 
pushing it with a 200 newton force to the right, and let's pretend that they're actually in contact. Well, what happens? Okay. So we can calculate the friction of force. It is moving now, so it's the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. So that's going to be 0 0.15. And we calculated the normal force up here times 1,000. So that's 150 newtons. So what does that mean? Well, we're going to have to draw a whole body diagram. So here's our box. The pushing force to the right is 200 newtons. The frictional force is um, 150 newtons. And we do have a normal force that is 1,000 newtons, and the weight is also 1,000 newtons. So that nicely, normal force. Okay, so if we look horizontally, the sum of the forces is going to be that applied force minus the frictional force. And that will equal MA. 200 minus 150 means that there is a uh, total force of 50 newtons. The sum of the forces is 50 newtons. And that equals uh, its mass. What was the mass of three kilograms? Times the acceleration. So there was the three kilograms up there. So if I want to find the acceleration, I have to divide both sides by 100. You can see that he's going to accelerate at the rate of 0 0.5 meters per second squared. So what will happen? If he continues to push with a force that is greater than the kinetic friction force, the box will accelerate at 0.5 meters per second squared. 